So settle into whatever makes you most comfortable right now. It could be lying down, sitting up, supine, cross leg. Whatever helps you relax into ease and grace with your body. with your body and just noticing what's going on with that physical container that you get to own that you get to occupy that you get to travel in. and as you make the breath a little longer a little deeper becoming aware of the subtle shift in your body and in your mental process as you breathe deeply are you relaxing a little bit more? And this is the mystical connection of your breath, your body, what goes on inside that we want to explore. That the ancients called chakras, a system of energy, energy flows, energy junctions that live in our body. It's this vital if we wish to take charge of our lives, our inner technology, the most important asset, resource, you get to occupy and live with for the rest of your life. And it helps you, it puts you in command of your energy, your states, your experiences, your thoughts, your emotions. So what does this word chakra mean? In Sanskrit, it means wheel of light. And think of them as energy centers, as energy flows through your body. There are different points in our body where there are these junctions, intersection points. And the chakra systems explain where these nodes are in your body, what they stand for, and more importantly, how to activate them, how to live with some degree of control over them. So how many chakras are there? There are seven chakras in your body. So during the course of this journey, we will try to activate these chakras to help you become aware of it through words, through imagery projected onto the screen, because there is certain symbols or patterns that each chakra is associated with, and certain colors that we use, and certain musical elements. And some of it in a conscious way you may feel it and some of it might be happening in a subconscious way most importantly be curious to the words colors sounds the music relax into the experience and see what emerges for you how you process the next 25 minutes or so so here's a journey stepping into those seven chakras the chakra Sanskrit is called Mula Dara. It's a root chakra. And it rests at the base of the spine in the perineum. And this is the chakra, the root chakra at the base of your spine that's concerned with keeping your life vibrant and sustainable. And occasionally, if you open your eyes and just stare and wonder at the ceiling, the pattern that you see projected is the pattern, the geometric pattern that people were inspired to draw when focusing or meditating on the root chakra. And it's associated with the color red and the element in nature that it is connected with this earth because it is grounding, it is it's what sustains us, it's what gives us our stability. And the qualities associated with this chakra is patience, structure, stability. It is the very root of your life. And the way to access this chakra is to bring your attention to the base of that spine and as you breathe, you could mentally repeat, I live from my integrity. 
I love from my heart. And I'm connected to life in all its manifestation, all its glory. I am truly good. And feel as you breathe deeply the energy penetrating to the base of your spine. And from there we'll slowly migrate your awareness to the second chakra, the sacral chakra known in Sanskrit as Swadishtana. And the Swadishtana chakra is located in the pelvis near the sacrum. And this is the energy center in our body that allows you to enjoy life at a physical level. And it governs our vital well-being, our capacity to develop a sense of abundance. So the Sanskrit word Swadishtana literally translated means own sweet abode. And it refers to our ability to cherish our physical presence, to find our pleasure, health and joy through the physicality of the world we live in, through sand, grass, wind, air. And the color that you see again on the pattern that is playing out on the ceiling is orange. And this is the pattern for the Swadishtana Chakra and the element in nature being water. So the qualities that you associate as you breathe into your sacral areas, well-being, sexuality, pleasure, abundance. And as you breathe into your sacral region, you can access this chakra activated by saying, I honor my body and I treat myself respectfully. I receive pleasure and abundance through every breath I take, again through the physicality of my presence. And slowly we bring our awareness to the third chakra called Manipura. And it's located in your solar plexus region. And if you're not sure where that is, that's directly below the sternum and over the stomach. The Manipura chakra, the solar plexus chakra, regulates an inner knowing. That's why we say, I know it in my gut. It's what allows us to quickly make a decision based on gut about people, situations. When you sense danger, when you know you can trust somebody, when you know you can buy that house or take that job, the gut instinct comes from our Manipura chakra. And the qualities associated with the Manipura chakra is self-worth, confidence, freedom of choice, personal power that comes from knowing deep down what is your life about, what is your path, when do you say yes, most importantly, when do we say no. And the grounding element of the Manipura Chakra from nature is fire and the color is yellow. And as you meditate on your Manipura Chakra, as you breathe in and feel the energy center in your solar plexus area, you can use mental affirmations to reinforce it. Affirmations like, I am worth my weight in gold. I am confident in my ability to make my life work. And I choose goodness, light and love. So breathe into the third chakra, the Manipura chakra. And shifting our attention to the fourth chakra, moving up the spine, the center of your body, to the heart chakra, in Sanskrit called Anahata. And being willing to experience lasting love at a very deep fundamental human level rather than engaging in temporary attractions, being distracted by the attractions of the world is the significance of the heart chakra.
Yet all these aspects of the heart speak of love, life, and a penetrating awareness that everything in the manifest nature is sacred. And therefore the message of the heart chakra is really to accept the oneness of all life. And sometimes when we practice yoga or when we meditate, we lose that sense of separation and feel a sense of identification. Or chanting congregational kirtan can make you feel that way. Or watching an incredible sunrise or a wide open area or the solar eclipse can do it as well. The heart chakra is located in the middle of the chest and the color is green and the element of nature that activates your heart chakra is air. And as you breathe and meditate, feel your heart chakra, the qualities that arise that you'll feel is peace, love, unity and joy. So as you meditate on your heart chakra, access it with the affirmation, all love resides within my heart. Love opens and heals me. I anchor my heart in truth, love and good. And I give permission to let my heart shine and radiate love to those who accept my love. And we shift our awareness to the fifth chakra. The Vishuddha chakra located in your throat, so it's your throat chakra. And the location of it is both your internal and external throat. And the throat chakra is geographically and metaphorically located to that point on the back of the neck and the lower part of the brain where higher spiritual energy is channeled into the body. And this typically happens when the mind is free and when our spirit is open. And when this chakra is in some way impaired or the energy shuts down in the throat chakra, that's when our feelings are muted. We feel confused and our mind is disoriented. And the color most strongly associated with the throat chakra turquoise, the element in nature is ether, and the qualities that you experience is again similar to the heart chakra peace, love, unity, and joy. Shifting our awareness to the sixth chakra in Sanskrit, the Ajna chakra, located in the third eye, directly at the center between your eyebrows. And the Ajna chakra, located between the eyebrows, gives us the energy and the spaciousness to experience clear and concise thought, clarity. And it holds the roots for a certain level of psychological maturity. When life throws things at you, when there is confusion, there is still an element of clarity that allows us to cut through the confusion. And even if everyone else is raging around you, it allows us to make the right choices. And when fully activated, this chakra, the throat chakra, stimulates both hemispheres of the brain. The left side of a brain controls rational, analytical thinking. 
and the right hemisphere controls more synthetic, holistic thinking and creative activity. And working together, they create a harmonious vision of reality that keeps us grounded, logical, and yet intuitive and imaginative. The Ajna Chakra is also the chakra that allows us to expand that picture, that frame of reference of how we see ourselves and how we see the world. It allows us to eliminate self-limiting ideas or thoughts that denigrate our worth. And slowly through life experience, different kinds of positive and negative allow us to feel a certain truth about our life experience. We develop this chakra and strengthen our spirit. And many meditative practices, just in a very natural, easy way, develop this chakra by making you focus on the point between the eyebrows. And it's a much more complex chakra also, and hence this pattern swirling around you, representing a dynamic version of the geometric pattern that is the Ajna Chakra depicted in its base color, turquoise. And the element is the cosmos because it holds infinite space and capacity. And the qualities that we hold there, that we develop a wisdom, imagination, intuition, and knowledge. So as you meditate on that Ajna Chakra, either with your eyes closed or eyes open, looking at the pattern, the affirmation that opens this channel is, I think the very best of myself in all situations and at all times. And essentially, no matter what happens in my life around me, the frame of reference, the stories I tell, I choose the ones that empower me. that ground me and activate me for a higher quality, higher purpose in life. And finally, we slowly we ascend, lift our awareness to the seventh and most significant chakra the Sahasrasara, located at the crown of the head. And Sahasrasara literally in Sanskrit means the thousand petal lotus. Again, ancients visualized this chakra right at the top of our head as this beautiful symmetrical pattern lotus flower with a thousand petals. And this crown chakra at the top of your head, as you become aware of what's going on, how you're experiencing, feeling, intuiting the crown of your head, this is the chakra that opens up when we have the right level of psychological maturity and spiritual development. And it is that point when we shift past just having insights based on a knowledge, wisdom from a brain to spiritual insights. And you have a greater sense of what we are capable of and what our highest purpose might be. And in any tradition, whether it's Native American or Buddhist or Vedantic tradition, when people say, I've met my master, I met a master. It means that this is somebody who occupies or accesses that highest level of chakra, the crown chakra. And this is where when you are activating the crown chakra, you experience and know a divine connection. Some sort of an active presence in our life that is larger than ourselves. We can't explain it in words, but we feel it. And not just feel it in our head, feel it somewhere within our system, intuitively. And it is also that force that healers and mystics use.
So in order to experience that crown chakra, do you need to renounce everything in this world and its material temptations entirely? Well, certainly that is a pathway, but you don't have to. What is needed is just to get comfortable with this understanding that our goal in life, our purpose is to see the spirit in all life, all existence, all sentient beings, and even in the insentient existence in, on the earth. And to understand that we are on this earth, the reason why we are born, why we go through life is to be happy, to manifest joy and fulfill our soul's longing for love, for peace, peace, for happiness, this fundamental need that exists in every single human being, often bringing healing and transformation in subtle ways to our immediate world. So as you shift to your awareness, as, as you maintain your awareness at the top of the skull, the Sahasrasara, Or if you have eyes open and admire this pattern, and imagine the element, the entire cosmos, and the color violet that is associated with the chakra. Just pause and just think for a minute the wonder, the awe of that is our life, where we are on this tiny planet but really a huge ball spinning through Earth in the middle of all this cosmos with millions of stars, solar systems, galaxies. And that is not to trivialize our life and purpose on this planet. That is just to make us pause and wonder at the grand scale of our presence in this entire galactic universe and the mystery of it all that we will never comprehend. And so the qualities that you feel when you contemplate on the crown chakras, wisdom, grace, serenity, oneness with that all is. And as you meditate on it, the affirmation that opens up the channel is that there is some magnificent energy being formed, whatever you call it, that is in me, above me, below me, around me at all times, whether I'm aware of its presence or not, whether I access it. And when we drop into these practices, whether it's a small ceremony, a walk in the woods, it's a meditation practice, a Sufi dervish, any mystical tradition, it opens the portal to feel that sense of connection. And as we bring the chakra line meditation session to a close, drop back into your body. If your mind has wandered away, slowly come back. Take a few deep nourishing breaths. Just imagine there is some energy coursing through your seven energy centers, the seven chakras, starting from the muladhara, the base of the spine, rising up through each of the chakras. The swadhisthana, the sacral chakra, the Manipura and the solar plexus, the Anahata in your heart center, the Vishuddha chakra in your throat center, the Ajna chakra between your eyebrows, and the Sahasrasara, the crown chakra. As you sit there with a quiet spaciousness,
have a sense of wonder for it all, how it all functions, and a sense of gratitude that this energy system works whether we know it or master it, and that somebody has figured this out and has left tiny footprints over a long period of time and left us a body of wisdom for us to access if we chose to and make it a part of our lives. slowly move off stage and just leave the space with just a little bit of sound and no words will transition in a natural way with ease and grace to mind space travel with my friend Mare Hidari taking over the space and leading on this incredible journey with his piano playing. So in the next few minutes or so, Murray will take over and explain.